garage, man. So I pulled the throttle body off and I'm gonna be taking this with me. We're going to look at that Skunk 2-1 that I said that was for sale on Facebook Marketplace. The guy hit me back up and I'm supposed to meet with him at 9.45 and it's currently like 9.35. <laughs> so I'm trying to hurry up. But I wanna take this with me just to compare a couple of things. I'll, I'll tell you whenever I get back. I'm kind of in a hurry. All right, back home, and mission was a success. So our old throttle body, and here's the new throttle body I just picked up off of Facebook. It came with all new gaskets. It came with all the hardware. It came with a new freaking throttle cable bracket, which I'm super excited about because the one that's on this blocks one is just, it beat the shit. But what I'm mostly excited about is listen to this, dude. So yeah, that noise that you're hearing is actually the butterfly rubbing the inside diameter of the throttle body itself. You could feel the grind in there and the reason why this thing is sticking. So you can open that up and shut it and it doesn't give you that like satisfying like close, you know what I'm saying? You have to actually force it all the way shut. So this thing is just beat, dude. And I'm, I'm happy to be getting this damn thing off of my car. The new throttle body on the other hand, <laughs> Bro, what is up, man? There's no resistance whatsoever. This thing just moves nice and smooth, and it goes full throttle, completely closed. You know what I'm saying? You don't get that with this one. I know that was the problem. You could feel the resistance in this. You could feel it, and it's, it's disgusting. And this thing is just so smooth. So I'm excited to get this on the car. All right, got the throttle body all mounted on here and I did start the car. It does sound a lot better with this throttle body, but I am having a couple of problems here. I have two places to mount the map sensor. You can either mount it on the throttle body or mount it on the intake manifold itself. I can't mount it here because if I do, this doesn't sit flat. So I know that they make little block off pieces for this and you can put a bolt in it, but that hole right there is also stripped out. So I need to get that plugged up. I was thinking about tapping it and just putting a bolt in there like with some RTV or something on it, but I gave Cody a call and I asked him if he was available today. If I get this intake manifold off, if I can run it over to him really quick, um, if he's available that he can go ahead and plug that hole for me, just weld the damn thing shut. You know what I'm saying? And he said, yeah, he said, hell yeah. Yeah, get it off and get it over so I gotta hurry up man and get this done. My goal is to be able to drive this thing today. All right, got the intake manifold off and who is it freaking hot in here? Anyhow, gonna load up, head over to Cody's house so he can weld this thing up for us. Thank God he's available man or else we'd have been screwed. Hell yeah, that's better than putting a bolt in it. <laughs> I was considering just putting solid. a bolt with a nut on the other side. <laughs> Silicone it? No. Yeah, no, it's a lot more hell. solid now. Hell yeah. Hopefully no more vacuum leaks or anything. That's dope. Hey, then we're in a round circle and we got a line going down that way. We're back at the house, man, but I walked in the door and Ty Boogie was playing. I'm trying to figure out what's going on real quick. <laughs> what was that, ZL1? I guess I could check the title, huh? Yeah, a Jeep Trackhawk versus ZL1 Camaro. Dude, I can't wait to get the S10 done, bro. This is what I want to do with the S10, bro. Like, I, I'm tired of doing all this stupid little meets and going out and racing for free and all that shit. Like, I want to get more into, like, cash days type of stuff. I want to I build that truck to be competitive. Here we go. 
ZL1's got the launch, but boy, it looks like that track hawk pulled ahead. ZL1's on the brakes. What the hell? I don't know why the Camaro is on the brakes. Damn! <laughs> All right, I'm wanting to get this intake manifold cleaned up before we put it back on there, because this thing is gummed up, bro. It is nasty as hell inside of there, so. I also took the throttle bodies with to show them to Cody. Cody has a lot of experience with K-Series stuff. If you guys didn't know, Cody used to have a, well, I mean, he still has it, but um, his setup used to be a thousand plus horsepower in an RSX, man. Yeah, he used to go to the track quite often. And he, he had built a really competitive car. He hasn't been into it so much here lately. He's been more into like the fabric fabrication and stuff and just, you know, grinding, bro, and making money. But anyhow, I took the uh, throttle bodies down there because I just wanted to show it to him, you know? I'm saying and just so you guys know that block throttle body before anybody asks me if you guys can have it um, I gave that to Cody I was like here throw that in your parts pile man <laughs> I don't want it in my parts pile gotta find a brush to freaking clean them what happened to my brush my favorite one man God, everywhere's a mess dude everywhere's a mess <clears throat> yeah this one I love this one look as many projects as I have as far as like cars as many unfinished pro projects that i have believe me i have just as many unfinished home projects as well <laughs> i still haven't even finished painting inside of the house man all right i'm gonna put the camera up and really just dig into this thing man i gotta get the pressure washer out and the super clean and everything because i want to get the inside of this thing spotless Super clean. All right, so I went ahead and I taped off the throttle body side of this. Um, I'm gonna completely saturate the inside with super clean. And I also just boiled some water. So I'm gonna add some boiling hot water in there. Hopefully our duct tape holds up. <laughs> Nope, it's definitely coming out. Gas all cleaned up, got the intake ports on the head all cleaned up, and got the intake manifold all cleaned out and cleaned up, man. This stuff was freaking disgusting, and I am extremely satisfied with the fact that we got it all cleaned out. So now let's just go ahead and get it all put back together, man. I'll tell you what, these bolts on the bottom are a pain in the ass to get to. This one right here was tight. This one was kind of snug, but this one right here was completely backed out like three threads. Like it wasn't even tightened down. All the top ones were tight, but... I mean, that could also be a very good reason why we have such an erratic idle. It almost seems like everything I touch on this damn car, there's something wrong with it. It was either way too tight and stripped, or it was either way too loose and leaking. I don't know. Let's just get it put back together. I'm excited to see if uh, the idle is fixed finally. <laughs>
Well, so far the car definitely sounds a lot better than what it did, man. The idle isn't up at four grand anyhow. It sounds a lot better, it's idling a lot better. Of course, the TPS needs to be calibrated. I'm probably gonna mess with that tomorrow. I don't even have the, the K-Pro software on my laptop. So, I'm gonna do some research tonight and download that software on my laptop. Um, so that then I can plug into it and just calibrate the the TPS because it's kind of doing like a little bit of backfiry type shit if you try to throttle it too terribly fast. Um, I'm sure that's probably the reason why. But hell yeah, there it all is, man. I'm so happy that we pulled this off. Like it was a lot of a lot of extra work, dude. But I'm happy I took this down to Cody and he was able to plug that up for me. So huge shout out to him. Anyhow, guys, I'm really wanting to put the front end back on the car. Uh, but before I do so, with the front end off, I was able to notice all the control arms and stuff. And so, well, you can't really see this side, but this side over here, the wheels turned a little bit. So all the control arms and everything in here is just all kind of gunked up. Uh, this does have T and suspension on it, if you guys didn't know. But it's uh, it's hard to see that that bright T and green because it's just covered in filth, dude. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this thing off right here, dude. Right here in the garage on the lift. Why not? Hell freaking yeah. And like always, our Draft Tools pressure washer is sitting here ready to go. Alright, that's a lot better than what it was. Just blast off some of the dirt and grime. Now, go out here and grab all these body parts. Hmm, I figure we'll start with the fenders first. Here we go. Well, it's starting to look complete again. <laughs> now, mind you, the whites are not going to match because obviously we still need to do some body work, sanding to the rest of the car. I'm just basically doing the front end for now. We needed to get this all straightened up and I figured why I had all these parts off, I may as well get a head start on getting this thing prepped for paint. Besides, I'm kind of still trying to decide what color it is I want to spray this thing. So believe me, I originally just wanted to go to white. I don't know, I might still just do it white because thinking about doing a color change in my mind all of this engine bay door jams sounds like a nightmare dude so don't get too excited I might end up still just doing a white and maybe try to figure out like a I don't know some kind of design to do on. I don't know bro <laughs> I do want to do something a little bit different other than khaki and creamy everything else has just been kind of like basic you know maybe I should fade it one side white and the other side black and fade it right in the center no I'm just kidding anyhow it's too bad we don't have a new set of headlights I'm just kidding. So I did end up finding a set of headlights. Now these are eBay. So I'm hoping that they look halfway decent. I hope they don't look too terribly ricer. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, this is all I was able to find. I found a, a few people that was actually selling a set of OEM headlights. Like I think on Facebook Marketplace and one on OfferUp. But of course, both listings were like over six months old. And they were both sold already. So it, to my surprise... It's actually really difficult to find EP3 parts. So I ended up just ordering a set off of eBay, man. These were like $110. So, I mean, it's not like they're crazy expensive. But unfortunately, they were not made in Japan. They were made in Taiwan. So, anyhow, let's open them up, see what they look like. Oh! Wow, dude, honestly, they don't look that bad. Yeet. 
Dude, that's actually not a bad looking headlight, man. I'm actually thoroughly impressed. <laughs> Dude, it looks freaking clean. Holy shit. Okay, I definitely don't regret my purchase. These look nice, man. They look really nice. You know, sometimes a lot, of, a lot of times whenever you get an eBay headlight, it doesn't have like the prism in the glass like the OEM headlights do, or that chrome part back there. It wouldn't have like those lines in it. It would just be like smooth and it just looks cheap. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, that, that looks pretty damn OEM to me, man. Yeah, dude, these look pretty damn fresh. I'm excited now. <laughs> That's sick. I'm not gonna lie, I was extremely nervous about it. I was thinking I was gonna get them. I mean, because the picture, like, you couldn't really see them all that well in the picture. You know, a lot of times, those eBay ads, they're just, the, the pictures on them are kind of generic, bro, and like, they don't show a lot of detail. So, I was nervous whenever I purchased them. I mean, it, it was $110, it's not, like it was gonna really set me back. But I'm one of those kind of people that I work hard for my money and I, I don't like wasting it. You know what I'm saying? Even if it is only a hundred bucks. But yeah, dude, I'm actually thoroughly impressed with how how nice these things look for a hundred dollars. So hopefully we don't have any other problems. The bulbs and everything fit correctly like they should and they mount up correctly. And we are about ready to find that out right now. Well, there it is, guys. It uh, came out a lot cleaner, bro. I'll tell you what, it looks a lot freaking more presentable. So uh, now that the car actually looks halfway decent, I might actually have the motivation to put some work into it and fix all the other problems it has. Sometimes you gotta do things a little bit backwards. I mean, realistically, you ought to get something running correct before you start working on its appearance, right? But since B and I have the means to clean it up, uh, and without spending a bunch of money on it. I figured why not? So now I actually have something halfway decent to look at and I think to myself, I need to get that thing running, you know what I mean? I was gonna take it up and go grab some more, uh, fill up a fresh tank of E85 right now, but um, yeah, I definitely need to get that TPS calibrated because it's just blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> yeah, it was a mess. But anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do smash the like button. Let me know what you guys think of the EP3, of course. I think it's coming out to be pretty damn clean. There's still a lot of work that's got to be done to this thing for it to be nearly as clean as the EK. But we'll get there, man. We'll get there. I have decided I do want a new front bumper. I didn't even notice it had these cracks in it. So for to get the bumper to fit like perfect, I'm definitely gonna need to get a new front bumper. Or you know what, I might be able to fix that, we'll see. But yeah, it's got the paint coming off in other places of the car. We gotta go over the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? Go over the whole thing and give the whole thing a fresh paint job. And no, not just primer, <laughs> peace.